morning and welcome to my garden um, and the cat seems to want to take centre stage as well so this is B. <laughs> this is my garden my name's Margaret Fiddis and this morning we're going to make a nice tall upright arrangement by Bye Bye uh, in this lovely terracotta pot. It's a long tom that I've had a very, very long time and it's cracked and whatnot and I can't do much about it so I've glued it together. Um, inside is a plastic saucer uh, and on top of that is a half a piece of biodegradable oasis foam. It's not wholly biodegradable but it's as good as we get. And I've taped two pieces of pot tape across the top to hold everything in place. I've tried not to put that across the centre because if we do, when we put the central flowers in, we're going to uh, be able, unable to do that. The, the tape will be in the way. So here we are. We've got some nice aliens, different sizes, different lengths from the garden. Anna B. Um, she's determined, isn't she? I'm going to chuck you off again. I'm sorry, baby. Um, and we've got some Midalino sticks, not something that I use very often. I've got some natural ones and some mauvey ones which will tone with the alliums. Uh, so let's start, shall we? Start with the uprights. So here we have one of the alliums which we're going to place, just trim the bottom, take a little section off, make sure everything's nicely conditioned and cut diagonally, push it into the foam towards the centre back of the arrangement. The next one down, we're going to use Another one, chop the bottom again, just offset to one side, like so, below the next, below that top one. And then I've got a rather difficult one with a kink in its head, but we're not going to stop that from letting us use it. Get that off there, put that just to the back, it's a bit too long still. <clears throat> So it lines up again, and then I'm going to put this beautiful big one, oh B is gone, well, maybe it'll come back, I don't know, trim again, and I'm going to put that beautiful big one in towards the front and lower down like so. And I've got a couple of little ones that I'll place later, and a couple of little bits of um, perennial wallflower, which I'll place in afterwards as well. Now, to create the enclosed space I have here, five pieces of this lovely coloured Midalino which I'm going to push into the side of the block all together oops be careful not to bend them because they have a tendency if you're not careful to bend and snap and we don't want that to happen if it does happen though that's good just have to put another piece in make sure they come over the top and then I've got same natural coloured ones, we'll just try and get five of those, one, two, three, four, five of those, and put them on the other side in exactly the same place, down into the bottom, push, 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 and then we bring them over the top, and we hope very much that they will enclose the space and work perfectly above the height of the allium. If you want to measure that beforehand, that's fine. Otherwise, it's a bit of guesswork, hopeful, hopeful guesswork. I've got here some paper-covered wire, which will help me to tie it all together. But you could use bits of string or any other kind of wire if that's all that's available. So just wrap it round. And this is because this is natural cover coloured. Uh, it'll be likely to disappear. Just pull those together. And twist the ends. My friend the bees come back again. Well that's a bit of a nuisance because it's tending to go that way. So let's trim that off. See what we can do about that. And pushing it a slightly different place makes a difference. I've broken one of my sticks, unfortunately. That was kind of bound to happen, wasn't it? <laughs> That's the kind of thing that is always bound to happen. If that tends to go like that, I'm just going to cheat. <laughs> Cheating, I find, is always a good thing. Push a piece of um, I want it to fit on top. There 
we are, that's a bit better. Sometimes these things require a little bit of fiddling. And if it does require a bit of fiddling, then fiddle away. Gracious, that's noisy, I'm sorry. There's something going on in the background. We'll fiddle with the foliage at the bottom and I suspect that it will all fit together then. Now, so, one of the first things we need to do is to try to disguise this because we don't want it. I've got some hosta leaves from the garden. This one is a really nice blue green and actually goes very well with what we're using. Push that in low, low down, right alongside the tape here. Be careful and be firm with hosta leaves because there's a tendency to uh, snap, and especially if you use a longer one. Put another leaf, hosta leaf here. Slightly higher, pushed in over the top there. You can be quite generous with the width um, because that's a nice one because you've got height. Push another different, slightly different poster leaf towards the back so that brings me a line through. And then I've got a couple of these which are aspidistra leaves so I'm just going to do a tiny bit of manipulation put a sharp point push it in through the leaf underneath and it just gives you that shape which is quite nice I think push that in through there if you want to you can give these a bit of leaf shine let's just take a little look at that and see how we're going lovely a bit of more leaf manipulation in this lot I'm just going to put that one a little bit further up. I like an aspidistra leaf, I really do. And for the third one, I'm going to curl it a bit more right round a couple of times. Push through both. I probably should have done the leaf shine first, but I didn't. So now you see we've got that going in there. Now at the back, I'm just going to use a couple of bits and pieces. I've got a bit of pittosporum, florist type pittosporum. This cuts into at least three sections, so you've got like three little florets. That allows me to bring, that's my, I'm just going to cheat again here cheating business is no bad thing to support my framework and bring it in line a bit put this ball and all together in one place and pull it round like so that's a bit soft that leaf so it might not work take it off now become a lot better a lot lot better um, filler at the back I've got some leather leaf here snip it down bring it in bring it in Actually another dimension and I'm just going to use a stem literally a stem push the stem in to hold my framework back and another bit of leather leaf, bit of leather leaf. Now depending on how much foliage you've got, and obviously at this time of year you might have loads, uh, you can decide whether or not you want to fill in with anything else because obviously you don't just have to use foliage to fill in. I always fill in around the back because you never know who's looking. And sometimes people say, oh, you don't need to bother. Well, personally, I need to bother. So, put that there. So now the back is now looking quite neat and tidy if you look at that. With a nice, frilly back, lots of bits of foam. So if I look at the front here, which twiddled, that's twiddled, that poor little allium's moved. Put it back where it belongs. And that one there as well. And then these two little alliums, I'm going to place at the bottom. 
So that one is going in here and it's going to sit next to its friend. And its friend is going to come down. So it's going to bring my line out, if you like. And I'll just pop that at the back. So give me a line through as well. So you see I've got a line it's going right down and out and it's giving me some depth at the back, which is good. And then I've got these three little pieces of everlasting oil blind. Rather than waste anything, I'm just going to give a bit of extra dimension to my base of my arrangement. Bringing that down and bringing this through as well. So three pieces. So I had four, but obviously one's gone for a burn. And I'll pop you in here. A bit long. Pop you in here. And then that gives me another little line through with the with the with the wallflowers. So to finish, rather than trying to go over clever, you could either use this, which is commercially bought reindeer moss. You could use this, which is commercially dyed sisal. Or you could use natural moss from your garden or from anywhere else that you find it. I'm going to use the sisal because I think it's got a nice sharp green that adds another dimension to the arrangement. So you can pop it just literally tease it out a bit into the centre through and we'll just pop that through as well so it's not so solid I don't want it looking super solid and we'll go through of course that is always the way I think you have these nice ideas and then you find it's not possible there we are so just like so and then I'm just going to turn it and then at the front to bring it through where we have that little hole uh, in the front. I'm just going to tease a little bit of sizing into there and bring it slightly through things. I like things to sort of look as though they're connected and not done in isolation. They look as though they flow a bit and I don't mind a few sticky out bits front it. I think they actually look quite cool with a few sticky outfits. And to that end, I've got a few sticky outfits there. Now, my B is in place, my framework is in place. And I think I'm just going to uh, turn that around so you can see again. And I think that's quite nice. Quite a pretty seasonal late spring arrangement from your garden.